Mark, without talking about candidates and who's running in the right. horse race, what's your biggest concern about this election season? My biggest concern about this election season is that we have an enormous opportunity to advance conservative principles, which comes up only from time to time. Um, and instead, we're talking about populism and nationalism and protectionism and quotas and, uh, and a lot of other things. And so, you know, what I would like to see us do during a time like this is to advance the notion of individual liberty, private property rights, constitutionalism, a secure border, strong military, and all the things that we conservatives need to be talking about. We have the world's attention right now, and instead, uh, I feel like we're losing a Talk tremendous opportunity. Yeah, really. But, but how do you take a notion like individual liberty, a great principle, and turn that into something somebody says, here's how that impacts me today? It's a great question, and there's a million ways to do it. Let's take one example, school choice. School choice is about individual liberty. School choice is about competition. The other side's about a Stalinist straitjacket system, and if you live in a poor neighborhood, and if you're a minority in a poor neighborhood, you're going to have a crappy education, you're going to be going to a dangerous school, and that's just the way it is. So if you have competition and the focus is on the individual and the focus is on the family, rather than the union and the system, that makes a huge difference. And uh, there's so much static out there. That's just one little example. There's many, many examples. We but could, how, do, yeah. well, how would you rechannel, if you were a candidate, how right. do you rechannel this populist streak, which is, you know, people feel like they're just, they're behind, they're not getting ahead, they feel like America is getting beaten up a little bit around the world. How do you channel that kind of national pride, populism, into more conservative policy thinking? Because we need to be talking about Americanism. Not nationalism and protectionism. They're two. They're, they're different things. We we have this magnificent heritage. It's the Constitution. The Constitution gives the individual groups of individuals an opportunity to be very very successful. So if you're talking about quotas, which is nothing more than a massive tax on the American consumer, particularly the middle class and low middle class, say you buy a Toyota. Do people really want to pay 45 percent more for a Toyota? How does that create jobs and opportunity and so forth? So I would be talking about what's possible and, and juxtaposing to what this, as an example, the current administration is doing. And, you know, we had 25 million jobs created under Ronald Reagan, not just during his administration, but right through the Clinton administration. Massive economic growth, massive creation of new enterprises. Uh, many people who, for the first time, had wonderful jobs and created businesses. That's what you talk about, a vision like that. Uh, there's simply playing on the positive, the possible, as you said. Advancing yeah. liberty is positive. The Constitution is positive. Where the heck else in the world do you know do do these values actually have staying power? So to become another European power, uh, to, to to decline, to to continue to look inward rather than uh, I'll give you an example. People say we can't compete. Hell, we can compete. But as long as the EPA is strangling business and agriculture is strangling farmers and on and on and on down the alphabet soup, we, we are doing this to ourselves. So as, a, as opposed to focusing so much on what everybody else outside is doing to us, let's focus on, as you said, what we're doing to ourselves through government regulation and, and, it, and all the bureaucracy. And I think else. a lot of people don't because it's harder to address. And you actually have to know about it. The Environmental Protection Agency kills far more jobs than China, Japan, and Mexico combined. And same with a lot of these other departments and agencies. And if you have job-killing policies, which we have in this country, where employers more and more are being told, okay, you have to pay for leave out of your own pocket. Oh, you have to pay for uh, Obamacare out of your pocket. On and on and on. They're not going to hire people. They're not going to expand. In fact, they're going to hire lawyers and accountants to try and figure out how to get around these things. And in many cases, that means less employees, part-time employees, and more automation. I don't know why we don't make this case. We can make the case not only to conservatives, but to liberals and moderates and people who may not even be engaged right now. Well, I know you're making it on your radio show and you're also right. making it on Levin TV, so I'm going to encourage our audience to Thank follow you. you. Thank it's you a great Mark. honor, as always. Thank you, sir. God bless.